Did you find out you have MTHFR mutation and got prescribed Deplin? Maybe you're wondering whether or not Deplin is going to be bad or beneficial for you. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at this question around MTHFR and Deplin. What are the benefits? What are the risks and potential downsides of taking Deplin? And what does some of the research say about this? So again, as I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormone optimization, and just trying to get a better understanding of what's going on with your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out this question on MTHFR and Deplin. All right, so in this video, we're going to look at MTHFR and Deplin. Is the Deplin bad or beneficial? So if you don't know, MTHFR referred to in its long form as methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase is an enzyme that plays a critical role in forming the active form of folate called methylfolate. Now, our bodies do use other forms of folate, but the more active form is the 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, referred to as methylfolate for short. And this enzyme, MTHFR, basically takes a less active form and turns it into the more active form. There's several steps involved in the overall folate metabolism, and this is the final stage to get to the methylfolate. Now, methylfolate is used for various biochemical reactions in our bodies, and when you have a genetic alteration in your MTHFR enzyme, you're not able to make this methylfolate, which results in all kinds of problems, one of which is elevated homocysteine, which can put you at greater risk for cardiovascular disease, blood clots, dementia, and other things. So what about Deplin? So Deplin is a brand name for a prescription medical food. It's kind of like a supplement, but you do need a doctor's recommendation or prescription for it. And it's specifically designed for people with this genetic alteration in MTHFR. So that Deplin supplement is going to provide a concentrated form, a really high amount of this L-methylfolate, which basically bypasses the genetically altered enzyme and provides that methylfolate directly so you don't have to rely on your enzyme that isn't working as well. Deplin is often prescribed as an adjunctive treatment with antidepressant medications for major depressive disorder or people that have resistant depression. The rationale behind this is that the methylfolate may enhance the effectiveness of the medications by supporting neurotransmitter production. So the good or beneficial part of Deplin is that it is providing the correct nutrient for those with MTHFR problems or genetic alterations. The bad or potentially bad part of this is the concentration part. The amount of methylfolate in Deplin is quite high at 7.5 to 15 milligrams. And I'm sure many people do get a lot of benefit from Deplin, but it has no B12 in it, making a lot of people prone to something known as folate trapping. This can lead to worsening of your symptoms like anxiety, fatigue, headaches, and you could even end up with more problems than you had prior to taking the Deplin. It can't happen right away, like the first dose that you take, but usually it's going to happen several weeks out or several days out. As you burn through some of your B12 reserves, the good feeling that you're getting from the Deplin may start to vanish and you start to get these old symptoms back again, which can be kind of confusing and frustrating for people and they don't really know what to do because initially they felt better, but now they feel worse. So they're not really sure what to do. Sometimes they don't even make the connection that it is from the Deplin. And so if this happened to you, it's probably related to too much too soon of the methylfolate. This type of medicine also contains some dyes in it, which are never good for us to take because dyes are usually neurotoxic and just toxic in general. 
but I wanted to speak a little bit more about the dosing of it. Why is it so high? And is there actually research to support or validate this high dose methylfolate? And indeed there is. In 2012, the American Journal of Psychiatry evaluated the efficacy of methylfolate as an adjunct treatment for people with major depressive disorder in patients who didn't respond adequately to serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The study found that those that supplemented with the L-methylfolate or methylfolate resulted in significantly greater improvement in depressive symptoms compared to those that didn't take it or the placebo. It was the 15 milligram dose and not the 7.5 milligram dose that had a statistically significant difference, by the way. So it looked like the higher dose actually worked better. The number needed to treat there was six, and there really weren't more adverse reactions in the treatment arm versus the placebo. So that's also interesting. It's also notable, though, that there are only 42 people in the treatment arm. There was more in the placebo. And I think this probably isn't enough to really capture enough of the more sensitive people that could have been taking the methylfolate and that end up with these symptoms of folate trapping. It also illustrates for me, though, that many people don't actually have problems from these higher doses of methylfolate. I don't generally recommend such high doses, especially not right away, because I like to be more careful and deliberate with my recommendations. But it is good to know that there is some research on this high methylfolate dosing. Put a link to the research article in the description if you want to check that out. So how do I do that? Help you better understand MTHFR and Deplin in its role of being beneficial or bad. Hopefully it gives you a better context for the discussion in general and answers some of your question. If you do have other questions, drop those in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.